Do you need to use a doser when adding elements to a nano reef tank? Stay tuned to find out. Welcome to my latest video of the Red Sea Max Nano Peninsula and we're going to cover dosing today. So uh, up to about four months ago I wasn't dosing at all, I was just relying on 20% water changes. As I was adding more coals and more importantly as the dinos was sorted and cleared up the, the coals started to grow out, I started adding some more coals and your alkalinity, magnesium and also my calcium started to go down below the range of what I was using. So I started manually dosing. Now, I've had a number of tanks in the past and I've still got a bigger tank than this 100 litre tank. And I've always used a doser, whether it be the Neptune Apex or a Kamoa doser, and it's worked well. But there's a big difference. I'm only now only dosing about five to six millilitres. Whereas in those tanks, I was dosing from 20 millilitres up to 120 millilitres a day. And that's just not practical or, or possible because I was at 120 millilitres. I was dosing at over a 12 hour. What I've found is, since I've been dosing, the colours have really picked up on this tank as you can, as you can see. So at the moment, I'm dosing five millilitres a day of Orpha Reef. I'm dosing five millilitres of Red Sea Magnesium and five millilitres a week of manganese. And you say, well, why are you dosing that? All for reef should be enough. My magnesium has been sitting at about 1,200 recently, and I prefer it to be around about 1,350, 1,400, in that kind of range. If a little bit above that, a little bit below, I'm, I'm not really fast. So clearly it's not getting enough magnesium. And the reason for that is the mix of coals I've got. I've got some goniopora, I've got Alvia Pora, Bernard Pora, and also I've got some torches. So what I've found in the research I've done is that those types of coals seem to be a little bit heavier on the magnesium. I dose mag manganese because of Goniopora. Goniopora seem to uh, need more manganese than other minor elements, and it helps them to not only survive, but to thrive. So that's the kind of reason be behind that. And as you can see here, Coals are doing really, really well, and I'm really happy with this tank. There's some space for maybe three or four more coals, but that is it, so it's almost full. So you're talking about a box here that's 100 litres, that's quite small, that's chocker. Uh, I'm doing 20 litres a week of water changes, and that must be helping because I'm replenishing it in one in five replacement every week. So why have I always used a doser? And why is it good to use a doser? So I think number one, it's convenience. Once you've set it up and then you've got your, um, your dosing containers, that's all you need to do. And you just need to keep an eye on how much you're actually left in those, um, in those containers. It's easy because once you've set it up and you've calibrated. One of the biggest benefits is stability as you can dose the exact amount that you want, you can spread it across the day, so therefore you're minimizing the changes in your parameters. And also, the doser, touch wood, should not forget, unlike us reefers. Whereas you look on the flip side, the disadvantages of manual dosing is, one, you could overdose. To be fair, I'm doing five milliliters a day. So if for whatever reason I overdose by one milliliter, which I've done, it doesn't really matter. If on the odd day I don't dose, because I forget, which doesn't usually happen, and I'll go into my routine in a, in a minute, then it's probably not gonna matter. But the key is testing, testing your water parameters every week, so therefore you can adjust. And if you miss two or three days, you should see that in, not necessarily how your coals look, but also but your parameters, they will, they will drop. And I find they do drop if I don't dose for two or three days. So to my routine, so what I actually use is I've got a syringe, and I top that up, and I've got a couple of those, I top that up with all for reef every morning, five milliliters. And what I always do is I always come down in the morning, first thing I do is have a look at the tank, see if everything's okay, nothing's fallen off of a ledge or, or anything like that. So I then fill that up with five milliliters of all for reef. I've got another one of these that I fill up with five milliliters of magnesium. And then before I go to work, so it's probably about an hour before I go to work, I try and dose all of the Orpha Reef in that five millilitres in that period of time. And I leave the magnesium on the top, just like that. And then in the evening, 
I will dose the other five millilitres. The reason why I don't dose them at the same time is that you can get, with some dosing agents, participation, or participation, um, if I can say that word. And what it happily basically means it binds together and it has no effect. I think that's my understanding anyway. So that's why I keep it separate. And I do find that I'm more in tune with the tank. Not because I'm manually dosing, it's because I'm spending more time with the tank, especially in the morning. And because I go through that routine of every morning doing that, I'm less likely to, less likely to forget. What I would say though, I'm not too sure it's sustainable in the long term. I'm doing it for four months and that's okay. If this went up to 10, 15 mil that I was dosing of each, I probably wouldn't do it. I just don't think it's um, that sustainable to, to do that. And I definitely wouldn't do it on a larger tank. But if you think about what you're doing, you're, you're with your tank more often, uh, you save the money of, of dosing heads. If you've got something like all for reef and magnesium, you're talking about two dosing heads, but you get so many different varieties out there at the moment. You've got Red Sea, which is quite popular with the four part, and that means you have to have do four dosing heads, and that's not cheap. Now, what you could do is set up your tank, and you don't need to dose from day one. And so you probably wouldn't be dosing if you're doing water changes for, I don't know, 12 months, maybe longer, depending on how your corals thrive and how many corals you put in there, and also how often you do water changes. So you can spread the cost by doing it that way. But if you want something that's simple, not the most convenient, but it is cheaper, then I would say manually dosing would certainly help. Now, leave the comments in below whether you dose, whether you don't dose, and also what do you dose, and do you manually dose? And also, if you like this video, then give it the thumbs up. And if you don't, give it the thumbs down. And why not subscribe to future videos? But for now, thanks for watching.